The fields of a circular cylindrical solenoid can be found using the Biot-Savart law. If these plane parallel plates were of infinite extent, an applied voltage would give an electric field that is uniform. What this plane parallel capacitor is to electric fields, an infinitely long solenoid is to magnetic fields. That is, if this solenoid were infinitely long, a current in the winding would produce a magnetic field intensity that is essentially uniform inside and equal to the surface current density. Outside, the field would be essentially zero. This solenoid is large enough that we can poke around in it with a magnetometer probe and see how the magnetic field is actually distributed when the length is finite. This axial hall probe shows us the magnitude and direction of the field. The probe measures the field along its axis. The lower scope trace records the probe output. The upper scope trace shows the coil current. When the probe is oriented this way, the axial component of magnetic field is measured. When the probe is oriented this way, the radial component of magnetic field is measured. Let's measure the axial magnetic field component along the axis of the cylinder. On the axis, the radial component is, of course, zero because of symmetry. Well inside the solenoid, the field intensity in the z direction tends to be uniform everywhere. The infinitely long solenoid can be regarded as the analog for MQS systems of the EQS plane parallel plate capacitor. Let's measure the magnetic field well inside the solenoid. We measure about 2.3 gauss just inside the winding as compared to the prediction of 2.5 gauss. Let's see what the tangential flux density is just outside at the same axial location. Just outside, the flux density falls by more than a factor of 10 to 0 0.15 gauss. Just as the capacitor can be constructed to create a uniform electric field between the plates with zero field outside the region bounded by the plates, so too the long solenoid gives rise to a uniform magnetic field throughout the interior region. Our solenoid length is finite, so the field inside is only approximately uniform. and the exterior field is only approximately zero. Another way to demonstrate the discontinuity in magnetic field between inside and outside the solenoid is to use this transverse probe. This probe measures magnetic fields transverse to its flat surface. Here, for example, is the on-axis field. Turning the probe by 90 degrees gives a zero signal, which shows the field is purely axial. We now place this probe just outside the solenoid in the orientation to measure the small tangential field component. As the probe passes through the current-carrying winding, the magnetic field abruptly rises to the interior field value.